Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are doing something a bit different today. I am just working on some flowers right now, so I figured I would answer some questions for you as I kind of work along because it's like all the same flower, a little bit tedious. So yeah, I asked you all for questions this morning um, in an email and you guys really delivered. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. So many questions and that's not even all of them. So we're gonna have to do more of these in the future leave more comments below in the comment section of the video um, so I can answer them for you and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out if I answer your question. But anyway, I'm gonna get started on these hydrangeas, which of course you can get the tutorial for on my YouTube channel. Um, and I'm gonna begin answering some of your questions as well. So the first question is from Instagram and it says, what do you wish you knew when you started? That is, a difficult question because there are many things that I wish I knew when I just started. First thing I would think of is pricing because that is such a big thing. Actually, that was probably the most requested question. How do I price my work? So we're gonna have to do like a whole video on that. But I guess I just wish I knew how to calculate my pricing um, so that I was paying myself properly as well as covering all of my overhead costs and ingredients and all of that. I guess just like a bit more business training than I had when I started out, which was none. <laughs> so yeah, if you're starting out, I would say just get a handle on your numbers. I mean, I'm still working on that now. It's a never ending process, just trying to understand your numbers and how you you're growing and how to set goals and everything, which yeah, I'm not great at the numbers. I'm more good at like the creativity stuff. So I try and let other people handle that. But if it is your business, you have to know your numbers. That is the one thing I wish I knew when I was starting out. Our second question here also comes from Instagram and it is, what is something I want commissioned slash would make for fun? This is a really fun question. I think I would love to work with maybe like a campaign or like editorial or something that would be really fun if they needed like flowers for something and they wanted the models to be eating them. That would be super fun. Or just like getting detailed shots of the flowers with like a product. I think that would be super cool. Yeah, something I guess like commercial, commercially would be really fun. Also, like even if it were an art gallery or something along those lines, I would love to do, let's say like an art show one day just with like all sugar flowers. That would be amazing. So, you know, if you know anyone, hook me up. Our third question came by email from Fran and they said, when you decided to teach and make tutorials, how did that happen? And was it a tough decision? So, okay, I guess the story of me starting to teach and make tutorials was just brought to you by the pandemic. I mean, that is one good thing that came out of it. I actually had time to do something that had been on my mind for a long time. The decision to teach was really just brought by having to pivot and do something else uh, besides making cakes since there were no cakes <laughs> during the pandemic I'm, like very few cakes and very few large cakes um, which is kind of my bread and butter so that is really it it was a necessity thing and also something that i had thought of doing for a long time prior but had no time to do before and didn't really know how to make time to do that because I didn't have an experience with it. Like now I can film some videos throughout the week when I'm not so busy, but before I, yeah, I was clueless. So was it a hard decision? No, because I had nothing else to do. <laughs> and it is, it is something that I wanted to do uh, previously. So it was kind of a silver lining, if you will, of the pandemic is the fact that I am able now to teach and kind of meld this side of the business in with the wedding side as well. The fourth question here is from Denise. It's just a fun question. What kind of dog do I have? <laughs> And Denise also said that they used to work for a rescue and has two rescue dogs. Very cute. Um, I have an Airedale Terrier. She is wild, even though she's like eight years old now, but she's like the cutest little bean ever. I'm going to post a photo here so you can see her. Um, yeah, she's just the cutest. I love her so much. 
Heather is asking, do I use a center dowel in my cakes? Why or why not? Yes, I do. I use a center dowel in all of my tiered cakes, um, not in single tier cakes. I've never done that, but I have seen people do that, I guess, for super tall cakes. Usually I would just put like a couple straws or something to secure it if it's a very kind of tall skinny cake. But yes, I do use centered dowels because I do not want any shifting happening during the transportation of the cake or if it's at the venue, it's sitting there on the table and like somebody accidentally comes and bumps it once the cake is already starting to come to room temperature. I would never want anything to move or shift. So it's just kind of for my sanity. I like to put the center dowel in and it makes me happier to just think that everything is a little bit more secure. Okay, I'm gonna answer one more question for today and then we're gonna save the rest for another video. So Pooja asks a two-part question. They say, what percentage of flowers break after drying? And have I ever delivered a cake with flowers on it already because the venue didn't have a staging or a setup area? So first part of the question, what percentage of flowers break after drying? It's a fairly small percentage because I'm comfortable with all my thicknesses. Like I know how thick I'm gonna roll everything to prevent the breakage. Of course it does happen though. And I do show you how to repair petals in all of my paid courses. I would say only like 5% would break and usually they're repairable. So it's a pretty small percentage at this point, but definitely when I was starting out and also using like a lower quality gum paste, it was a higher percentage. And the second part of the question, have I ever delivered a cake where I had to have the flowers on already um, because they didn't have a setup area? Yes, I have, although I really hate doing that because I like putting the flowers on at the venue where the cake is gonna stay. I do not like having to move it around or anything once the flowers are on there. But yes, I have had to do that. I even gave the cake to a catering company who brought the cake like two hours away because I wasn't gonna be able to deliver there. So yes, I have done it. I did not like doing it, but I think it is possible. Sometimes you just need to put some padding between the flowers if you like you can kind of shake the cake a little bit, see if any of the flowers are uh, touching or like jiggling because the wires are moving. Just put something between those petals so that they don't crash into each other while you're driving. And I think that's all you can really do. 99% of the weddings I have delivered to have an area to set up. And usually I'm arriving so far ahead of time because the cakes need to come to room temperature before they're being served. That everybody is setting up. The florists are there, the rental people are there, the wedding planner is there getting everything ready. So everyone's setting up at the same time and there's usually like the cake table that I'm setting up on and I'll grab a couple chairs and um, just set everything up there. But this was really fun. So make sure to ask any other questions you have in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss if I answer your question. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.